Welcome to Senior Moment Successful Aging. I'm your host, Mary Beals Lutka. I'm the Area Agency on Aging Director with NACOG. You can reach me toll free at 877 521 3500. Successful Aging is sponsored by Yavapai College, Division of Lifelong Learning. Our producer is Nancy Bennett, and you can reach Nancy at 717-7607. So give her a call if you have suggestions about shows you'd like to see or questions about today's show. Again, welcome to Senior Moment Successful Aging. Today, our guest is Pam Catlin. Hi, Pam. How are you? I'm great, Mary. Thank you. Did I you. say that right? You sure did. All right. Good. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. We've had you on the show before, mm -hmm. so I welcome you back. It's been a long, long time, so I'm looking forward to an update. Um, Pam is the horticultural therapist. She's been doing this for over 30 years, and she works with adult care services. Mm -hmm. And I know adult care services is a very strong partner with the Area Agency on Aging. Right. So welcome. Thank you. Again. It's a real you, pleasure. Why don't you give us a little bit of your background and how you got started in horticultural. That's hard to say. I know. It, <laughs> so, it is a hard thing to say. Horticulture. Yeah. That's why so many people just kind of shift it to, she does the, they call me the plant lady. The plant lady. Yeah. I like that. I can do that too. <laughs> well, horticultural therapy, uh, I found out about because there was a period of time when I was in school, when I was in college, and I just kept saying I wanted to work with people and plants. Mm -hmm. And nobody knew what I was talking about. And finally, one of my professors called me in and said he had just found out about this new field. It's an old, old field, but it really didn't come into being as a profession until um, the about 1973 and so he showed me the information he said I think this is what you've been talking about and I looked into it and I'm like you're right this is exactly what I wanted I, I knew I wanted to work with people and plants and and that's what it is it's really the uh, horticultural therapy itself is really the engagement of an individual in a plant related activity. It can be out in the garden, it can be indoors, it can be actual plants or it can be sometimes we work with botanical art. Uh, it doesn't, it isn't always growing a plant but it is using some sort of plant material and and this is done by a trained therapist, that's me, and and the purpose of it is not to walk out the door with a, a really cool project, but the process that the individual goes through and, and how they are able to achieve goals that they are working towards, such as with the people I work with, who many of them are older adults yes. now. So I'm working with people who want to maintain their motor skills. So we're working on our fine motor skills, our upper gross motor skills in particular, and we're working on cognitive skills and sensory stimulation and all those. And so that hasn't changed over the years that I've been doing this, and I just, I got hooked and most people were like when are you gonna get a real job because no one had ever heard of this and and they finally have quit saying that and recognize that it is a profession and it's been a great career choice. Now you, you're somehow involved with Denver uh, an institute right. in Denver as well. Do you teach right. there? I do that's the Horticultural Therapy Institute okay. and it's based in Denver. They teach all around the country we kind of alternate from west coast to east coast and people come from all over the country and actually all over the world. We've had students from Japan and from South America and uh, it is a horticulture, the whole focus is horticultural therapy and in order to become a registered horticultural therapist you need to have coursework in human services, horticulture, and horticultural therapy. And so the certificate program through the Horticultural Therapy Institute provides the horticultural therapy, or HT is how, what we call it, piece. And, and so I, I am an instructor for that. So, yeah, I mean, when I first saw horticulture, I thought, okay, she's a gardener. Uh -huh. But obviously it's much, much more than mm -hmm. being a gardener. Mm -hmm. you, do, you have to know how to be a gardener. You, you, not, you need those skills, and then you need the, the people skills as well. And you're working right here in Prescott. Right. You know, so we're really um, blessed to have your talent right here in our Quad City area at, at Adult Care Services. So you also write 
Mm -hmm. um, and you've got several books out, and right. you know we can touch base on those in a little bit because I want to go back to. You know, you, you talked about what is horticulture therapy, but I'd like to go into it a little bit more. I mean, who would need horticulture therapy? What are what is a typical client? <clears throat> look okay. Like? Well, first of all, I just like to say everybody says, "Oh, I know what, exactly what you mean because I find it so therapeutic when I go out and pull the weeds and such." Yeah. And and so. There is that aspect of, of working with plants that is very therapeutic. And then horticultural therapy takes it a step further in, in terms of creating programs that, that help people achieve the goals they're working on. So it isn't just about relaxation or feeling good. It's, it's about achieving these other goals, these other outcomes. And so anybody who, uh, anybody who has some sort of a challenge, whether it's a physical challenge, a mental challenge, maybe they have a developmental disability, maybe they are just, maybe it's someone who is just kind of socially deprived, living at home alone yeah. and yes. really being isolated. It's just such a broad array. And outside um, of that arena, people who have been un incarcerated or who are incarcerated, there are a number of HT programs in the correctional facilities. That's not my forte, but yeah. thank goodness there are some people that really are, are great with that. Wellness programs are starting to use horticultural therapy. Rather than wait until you have a problem, let's uh, incorporate it into wellness. And I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's really like it. something that so many people can benefit from. And all ages and all abilities. That's one of the beauties of working with plants and working with the soil and such is that it it doesn't care. It doesn't care if you have a, a disability. It doesn't care. There are ways to structure a program so that it works for someone who, ha who are maybe very challenged Mm -hmm. Like they could mix soil and fill a pot. And, and okay. then it, for someone who comes along who really has very strong cognitive abilities, very able in that, that area, arena, they could maybe do something like bonsai or something that's more complicated that they need to study about. So it's very flexible. So it gives you a wide variety of it things does. to focus on. But do, so you're. But right now you're focusing mainly on adult care services. I am. So yes. you know maybe just briefly let us. You know what is adult care services mm -hmm. here in Prescott? Okay. Adult care services. I've been involved with for many many years, mm -hmm. and it just keeps expanding. We have two adult day programs: the Susan J. Ream Centers in Prescott and Prescott Valley. And those are open to anyone 18 years of age or over. And so we have a real variety of ages and, and people going through various challenges. And, and then we also have our residential center, the Margaret T. Morris Center, and that is a memory care community. And we focus specifically uh, on caring for people who have Alzheimer's or other kinds of memory loss. So you and still get a, a variety of the adult care services. We do. Think. So it's not real all variety. just about Alzheimer's patients. Right. It's a real variety. We'll have people yeah. who have had a stroke. We have the people who are isolated, like I mentioned. We have also people with developmental disabilities, people who have mental health challenges. It's a real broad variety. And all of those people end up in my program. So, so when I'm creating a program, it's, it's fun, really, to just see how to make it work for everybody. We also now have an, uh, an in-home care program called um, My In-Home right. Care Partner. Yeah. And, and so that's been a, a new program that's really filling a niche in town as well. So in the community, ever, actually, we go all Chino Valley, Prescott Valley, you, and Prescott. So do you ever go out and do home visits? I don't, okay. but I see the potential for that. I, I just I'm don't just have thinking about I, that. I don't have time, yeah. be, but we just this year were able to hire another registered horticultural therapist. And so for the first time uh, it's in my time of living in Prescott, we now have two registered horticultural therapists, and that's Nancy Snyder. And she uh, is working out in Prescott Valley. And at some point, I, it is my dream that 
that we will be able to expand and offer that in at the in-home care level as well. That would yeah. be exciting because when you talk about separation and, and loneliness, but I know the adult care services has transportation. Right. So if somebody's listening and was thinking, oh, I can't get there, well, maybe you should call Adult Care Services and see if you can and find out. How mm -hmm. does someone sign up? Is this just a normal part of the day services or is it something uh, that someone has to sign up for? It's a good idea to... Uh, ideally what we ask people to do is come in, have an appointment, come in, have a tour, spend some time at lunch. Uh, that's It's a great idea to come at lunchtime so you can really kind of see what that's like as well mm -hmm. and see some of the activities taking place. And then there's a, a sign up process. And, and if there is a desire for transportation, then that is a, a little bit of an extra cost. Mm -hmm but it makes it really work for family members that, that That's maybe don't, sense. maybe they don't drive or maybe it's just uh, work schedules and such. So it's yes, nice okay. to have that transportation process. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I have my mom in adult day services in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's not, you know, everyone's saying, oh, it's like daycare for adults. No, it isn't because mm. it benefits the person going because there's stimulation, fun things like, horticulture therapy mm -hmm. uh, and then for the loved one caring for them they get a day off to go get their hair done or mm -hmm. do whatever they do or work mm -hmm. you know e either way so it's a win-win situation for right. everybody so so do you have horticulture every day as part of the regular routine we don't have it every day okay, but we, every uh, so regularly we we have it at all three sites okay and and so it's kind of it, it's a, kind of a confusing schedule, but but okay. we do provide it at the day centers. They are having HD programs twice a week. That's great. And at MTM, we're a little bit more. And at the Margaret T. Morris Center, we have the wonderful opportunity to also do what we call one-on-one -on -one horticultural therapy. So for those individuals who are no longer able to really function well in a group, mm -hmm. then they uh, receive one-on-one. -on -one. And, and that's where I really see some miracles, is people, when, when they have that focus, are able to um, do amazing things. Do you work with that beautiful garden in the back? Mm-hmm. And that we won an award on that yes, garden you, a few years ago. Yes, yeah. you did. And the name yeah. of the garden? Is it the Susan? It no, it is it's actually the the Kiefer Garden. Kiefer Garden. Uh huh. Okay. The Bob and Duty Kiefer Garden, strolling garden, and it's stunning. And we just keep adding to it, and and it's it's morphed over the years since we developed it about eight years ago. That would right. be fun to yeah. maybe have a show in the garden when it comes out this spring. Oh, that'd be great. I would love to do that because uh -huh. I, I don't think, uh, if any, if you haven't seen it before, uh, the impact of going through it, seeing what uh, all the folks have done mm -hmm. to be part of that garden, mm -hmm. the, the bricks they've made, mm -hmm. uh, the plants they care for, uh, it's it's just an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm sure that's a big part of horticulture therapy. You were saying earlier that it's, you know, you almost perked up a word in my head, landscaping. Right. So it seems like that's kind of not landscaping, but part of how you set it. Is that part of what you work with them on? Well, and, and I work with that with the residents and at the day centers, the participants uh -huh. on uh, we raise all, almost all the plants that we use in the raised beds and containers. Okay. So we start as much as we can from seed indoors and grow them on and then transplant them out to the gardens in the, uh, when the weather is good and care for them. The residents uh, and I do the, do the care of everything that's at raised levels. If it's at ground level, then it's a landscaping crew. If it's okay. raised, it's ours to care for. And we do veggies, flowers, and herbs, and enter things in the county fair. Um, I guess now we call it Yavapai Fair yes. instead of the county fair, <laughs> but it's still a really important part of our program. And we do everything. I don't really teach about about the landscape design mm -hmm. with the people that I serve. However, I sometimes will do workshops on accessible gardening because so many people uh, would benefit from that at home, whether you just don't bend over as well or if you're in a wheelchair or if you're just like me, a lazy gardener. Or in, in this area, we don't have any soil. So raised bed gardens and container gardens are a pretty important 
part of gardening here in, in this area. Yeah, I'm out in Dewey, so everything's in containers. I have old bathtubs mm -hmm. and big, and it, it, that's how I've made the, it successful. But mm -hmm. I could certainly use some more information. And I know you have a new book out, and, and I, I'm going to mm -hmm. look at that for a minute. It's called The Growing Difference. So if we can get a shot of that. Um, the Growing Difference... Uh, is natural success through horticultural based programming. So who would benefit from your book? People that would benefit from that would be anyone who's working with with individuals in care centers of any kind, the activities people, occupational therapists would benefit from it, therapeutic rec, uh, recreation folks. Also people at home that may be caring for a loved one and what I hear so often is oh I just don't have any way to connect with my loved one anymore yeah. and and this is full of activities it's not actually a how to garden book it's filled with 35 horticultural based activities that have actual outcomes that that can be derived from following through on those activities they can be used for children they can be used for adults and and they can be adapted for specific needs and so it's really my intention in writing this was that it could be used by a really broad sector of the population. Mm -hmm. Teachers would find it helpful in edu in elementary ed and also yeah. in special ed, I believe. And programs like, a uh, long time ago, I, I worked at Yavapai Exceptional Industries and programs such as that would benefit from it as well. Yeah, I was just thinking about my daughter, she's a teacher. Uh -huh. And it's like, well, I'm looking it through here and there's some great projects and, and my mother as well. I know that's mm -hmm. one way my sister connects with her is they have a little garden for Mother's Day every year because she has everything. We all buy plants nice. and seeds. So, because that's something she still likes to right. do. Uh, but she has to be prompted. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. yeah. But this would be a really nice, uh, a nice thing to get yeah. her, my sister. And it's uh, step by step, everything, which is important. And for me. <laughs> and tells you, kind of gives you pre planning notes. So it's like before the day that you actually start, it tells you what you need to have on hand, and 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 it gives you precautions. So if you're serving a population that might nibble on something ah, yeah. gives you some precautions there don't and, eat these plants uh, <laughs> yeah so it's really ba 35 of, of the projects that I just kind of step into the field of horticultural therapy they're like baby steps and uh -huh. and uh, my hope is that more and more people will start using plants to connect I, I like what you said earlier too that the plant the soil doesn't care mm -hmm. the plants mm -hmm. don't care yeah. And to see something, you know, I'm an old farm girl, and when the, when the corn first used to come up, my dad would load us all in the truck and run out to the fields and say, look, it's uh, coming nice. up, yeah. you know, so it, there's yeah. a thrill to that. There is. There's like, oh, you know, it's growing, and it, of course, that was our, also our, our well-being and our, right. our life. Right. But uh, even a small plant makes a big difference. Do they get to, uh, at adult daycare services, do they get to uh, eat the herbs? Oh, yeah. They, we, I incorporate cooking. If you feed them, they will come is my, yeah. my theory. Yeah. So so I, I always, in the... I, every now and then throw in a cooking class that has to do with either what we've grown in the garden or or sometimes like next week we're having Hawaiian hour because most people need to go to Hawaii in January and you can't all get on the plane and go so we just in our imaginations go to Hawaii and we'll be eating mango and papaya and pineapple and all those good things and so so cooking and 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 the folks will be actually doing the preparation of the food and uh, which for many people is a skill that they love and they don't want to lose right. and for some for some of the men it's like well I haven't done that before and they find out that they enjoy it now I would have never guessed as a, a HT therapist that you would have been doing cooking classes so I love uh -huh. that because that just shows how many different yeah, things are involved right. with horticultural therapy. In fact, therapy. there's a section in the book on food projects. So because because it is you know, if you're having a hard time getting anybody connected, create a food project and they will uh, plug in and then you plant the seeds, you plant the pineapple tops and yeah. watch it grow and then mm -hmm. eat it. Mm -hmm. and that's a fun thing. <laughs> that's a fun thing to do. We always like to eat. Um, where would we get this book? How would we connect so to, to buy, purchase the, it. The best way to get this book is through Amazon 
to go to Amazon.com okay. and just to type into the search box um, The Growing Difference by Pam Catlin okay. and, and it will pop right up. I've written chapters in other books so if you don't do that those other books show up first and and you can also get it through create space but people have been having a little difficulty there so I suggest they just go to Amazon so amazon.com the growing difference Pam Catlin mm -hmm. and it's c-a-t-l-i-n and we'll they'll run a line for that so our, our viewers can write that down and again if, if they have any questions they can right. always call us and say I didn't quite catch that yeah. and call that 717-7607 uh -huh. number is there um, do you have a number f for uh, folks to call for the horticulture therapy at the adult daycare that we it, could contact you bet um, they can call me directly at 710-7875 okay. area code 928 yeah. and and that's my direct line okay. and if they want just general information about adult care services that would be 928-771-2335. Okay I appreciate that because yeah. it's always um, you know I do always want to make sure that folks can connect with our guests so in case they have further questions and things that I haven't brought out in, mm -hmm. in our conversation. What do you get out of it? Well clearly <laughs> if I've been doing this for so long, yeah. it it feeds my soul, yeah, and I can I, tell. I do come home at most days and say, uh, I saw a miracle. And one day, my husband said, "You see a miracle every day," <laughs> and I said, "Well, it's true." And so, for me, watching somebody see their abilities instead of their disabilities, uh, watching someone come to life, and and have a memory for what we've done even though maybe breakfast is a is gone they don't remember what they had for breakfast but they will come to the plant room to check on their plants there's this connection that i watch and i and it just lifts people uh, this process just really lifts people up and so watching that and getting to be a part of that process is what really feeds me. And, I, can, I can see your yeah. passion. And, and I can... love being part of a great team. Adult Care Services oh, is a fantastic team of people and we practice what's called person-centered care and it's part of culture change mm -hmm. and I put that in quotes because that's usually how you see it and it's all about not just serving the people our residents and our participants, but it's how we work with each other as well and how we support each other. And and that's something that is always evolving for us and I get very excited about that as well. It is very exciting because I know at the Area Agency in Aging, we're trying to culture, you know, change our culture as well because it's not about someone going to daycare services and being taken care of. Right. It's right. about that connection and about them being involved and engaged. And just recently we spoke to a counselor that works with hospice, and, and, I, and here's the connection. Mm -hmm. We all need a purpose. Right. We all need to have right. something we look forward to. And certainly to watch your plant grow or watch your project come to fruition is something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And that may be the only thing they have to look forward to. That's right. Yeah. So that's right. I, I can see that. That's being right. I think that's one inspiring. of the things one of the things about the plant program is is that it is it's functional mm -hmm. it it has a purpose for the individual like you said it, it isn't just busy work it yeah. is it's really we grow the plants for the fair or to take home or sometimes we have plant sales we we are going to be purchasing a new cold frame from oh. the proceeds of a plant sale that we had at the Margaret T. Morris Center. And and people feel so proud of that. All the plants that we have up here in our basket yes. were grown by the residents at the Margaret T. Morris Center. And and so we decorate the rooms, we everything has a purpose. And in the garden it's the same. And and it, so having that purposeful activity makes a huge difference for people. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to be connected. Oh, I love the plant sale. Yeah. So what time of year do you usually have that? Whenever the plant cart gets too full. <laughs> and I, it, so. <laughs> that makes sense. That's logical. Yeah. Or we try to time some sometimes right before our, like Christmas, So how example. do you announce that? Well, it's pretty much in-house. I put it up and, and oh. in no time at all, it, they're gone. But... 
Oh, darn. You should really CC the Area Agency on Aging so we could at least <laughs> get it out there a little bit. Well, I that's true. Bi- <laughs> that's true. Because that would be wonderful. It, uh, you know, we love to, to partner uh-huh. with you. So, But it sounds like you sell them pretty quickly to they your staff. They go pretty fast to staff and family, family. members who walk in the door, that's too. True. Help you raise right. money for additional things mm-hmm. that, that you can have. You know, I was noticing on the back of your book, too, that you started what 30 50 horticulture <laughs> well things yes. around the country it's right and uh, i realized recently i re- <laughs> well I, it is true yeah. because i started pretty early um in the field wow. and i started in 1976 and it, and the profession the american that. horticultural therapy association was started in 1973 i believe it was so i did i guess i am a pioneer, you are a pioneer. but one of the ways i i created so many programs was that for five years i worked for the chicago botanic garden ah. in their horticultural therapy services and we were responsible for starting 10 uh, pro- new programs a year in healthcare facilities around the Chicagoland area, so all throughout Cook County. So I, five years, ten, uh, possibly that's ten programs. That's how I kind of got that up to that extent. But but the fact is that very seldom have I moved anywhere where there was a horticultural therapy program going. And so if I wanted to do the work in this field, I had to make my own work. And so I became pretty proficient at creating horticultural therapy programs and and in various healthcare facilities. Thank you so much for being with us here today. We have our own pioneer, and we have many of those <laughs> uh-huh. in the Quad City area. Pam Catlin, again, and she works at the Adult Care Services. Is there anything maybe briefly that I missed that you would want to bring up? or? I pretty much touched on it all. Yeah, I would just invite people to come and see us. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah. no, even if you, you're welcome to just walk in, and I do recommend an appointment, but, but if you just walk in, there will be somebody who can take you on a tour. And, and especially you. come see our gardens at all the centers this spring. They're beautiful. They really are beautiful. And I know every once in a while they have a garden walk. So again, if you need information about today, uh, and maybe miss numbers, whatever, you can call our producer, Nancy Bennett, at 717-7607. And again, thank you so much, Pam Catlin, for joining us today on Senior Moment Successful Aging. And thank you for joining us as well. And this is Senior Moment. I'm Mary Beals Ludka. Until next time.